Hey guys, welcome back. In this podcast, what we're going to do is take this a step further. We've got our little mini website here that's going to run off some scripts, and uh, we're writing the scripts now. And in the last episode, we talked about how to grab a URL, out, excuse me, a variable out of the URL of a, of a page. Okay, so what we've done here, just to reiterate real quick, is we've set up a variable called page. This means something to the script we're writing here. And this page equals, and then I'm going to use this, this little function here, the dollar sign underscore get. And basically, this is the get method that, that is going to call. It says basically to PHP, hey, go up to the URL that you were just given and give me the, the, um, the URL, for, or excuse me, the variable for page. And if you look up here in the URL, you can see page equals about. So what we've done is this dollar sign page equals about, okay? And that can change depending on what happens. I'm gonna show you how that changes in a little bit, so just bear with me. And so what we've done here is we have uh, three sets of includes. Now think of it this way, when you're coding, Basically what you're doing is you're giving the server a set of instructions and there's an order of which to do things. And it's just like if you were telling a human being to go do these. Um, and it, you know, a lot of times it does matter what order you put things in. So let's just take it logically like that. The first thing we do is say, hey, Mr. Server, um, take this dollar sign page and set that variable, okay? So it's gonna go get that variable out of the URL. It's gonna remember it. And the second thing we're gonna do is say include the header and then include the content home and then include the footer. Now we may want to change this include content home. Okay, there's one other thing to consider here is what if the user never puts a variable into the uh, in, into the, the URL. And that can happen if like this is the main page of your website and somebody just types the link in to go to your website they would know to type in a URL. So what we need to account for what if there is no URL, okay? Excuse me, what if there is no variable in the URL? Sorry, I can't talk today, but anyway. Okay, so what we need to do is let's establish a little, um, an, we're gonna use what's called an if statement. And basically what we're gonna tell the server is if you don't see a URL there, then we're gonna set it to home, which is our default. So if, if for some reason there's no URL, we need, to, we need to set it to home. And this is how I do that. What we're gonna use is the if statement, which you start, you type the word if, and then two parentheses. And don't get this confused with the function. And then it's followed by two um, curly braces. And I like to leave a line here, okay? Now, what we're gonna do is inside these two parentheses is we're gonna say if these conditions are met, do something. Or if these conditions are not met, you can do something. And so if I just put if, and then put the variable called page, what this is telling the browser is if you see a variable called page, then do this. Okay, and we actually need the opposite of that, and this is how I would do that. What we need to tell the browser if there is no page variable, then we're going to have to set one. So what I'm going to do is use an exclamation point right in front of a page, and what this means, translated to English, is if there is no page variable, we're going to need to set one or do something. And what we're going to do is put that that uh, thing we need to do inside these curly braces. So if there is no page, let's set the page page equals, and then in quotes home. Okay, so that way if the user for whatever reason or there's a link or something it does not include a variable, we want it to go default to the home page. I don't want it to end up blank. I want it to, to go to the home page. Okay, and so now all we have to do is go down here and in, in the include, uh, I'm going to change this home variable. What we're going to do is break this string with two exclamation points and two periods. This is how I break a string. And what I'm going to say is include the content and see here, you can see our string picks up every time you see the double quotes. And then we're gonna use two dots, and in between those two periods, this is also referred to as dot syndex, I'm going to write the word uh, page, because that's our variable. Okay, so real quick, look at this, and don't let it be too confusing here, but you see this is a whole string, and we use dots to link together text and a variable. So what we're telling uh, the server is that here's the string, it's gonna be content slash, and we break out of that, and then whatever the contents of this variable are, it's going to you know drop that in there, and then open it back up with another dot, and then quotes dot PHP. So what this is going to do is the variable is going to be the name of the page that I go get. Okay. So let's see how this works here. First of all, let's take just a second. Let's put some content into these so I know what they are. Let's just do H1, and let's say about, and let's go to contact. We'll say H1, and let's say contact. And then let's go save it and go set home. We got this as the home page, that's good. And then products, let's do H1 uh, products. Okay, so now I have some content in each one of these and it know, knows what to include. So let's go back up here 
and let's take away the variable page equals about. So now there's no variable set. So remember we put that if statement in to tell PHP, um, hey, you know, this is what we're gonna do. So if I do that, you can see, hey, we got the home page. Okay, and we got our, our navigation. We haven't styled any of this yet, so I know this looks a little strange, but anyway, we know we're on the home page. Now if I set that variable, and we're just gonna do it by hand right now, if I set this to page equals um, products, then you can see we got the products page. If I change this to content, contact, sorry, we can see that I get the contact page. If I change it to about, we get the about page. So you can see that passing that variable, already this works. We've selected the content that we need to select. So let's go back over here real quick. And what we need to do now is make our navigation work. So it will do this every time. So let's go to the header file, which is where all this is. And remember now, when I change this header file, it's gonna change the navigation on all pages. I only have to do it once. So the H, the, excuse me, the, the, the link here is going to be simply index.php. I'm gonna leave it there because remember, if there's no variable, it sets it to home. So I don't need to worry any more about that. Let's go down to the next one, let's say index.php, and then we'll go question mark page equals products. So I've embedded that variable right into my URL. Let's go down here, let's say index php question mark page equals about okay and then finally let's go down here to contact and let's say index php question mark page equals contact okay now my navigation should work so let's go back over here let's refresh and you can see now when i click on these links here's the home when i click on products we have products about is about and contact is contact so this is all wired up and ready to go so we've done some cool stuff um and in the next podcast, everything's working here. What we're going to do is we're going to style this and make it look a little more like a web page. And I'm going to show you how you can use CSS to style the links so you can tell what page you're on depending on what link you've clicked on. So we'll do that next. So um, we'll move on now.